what's the correct age for a kid to be able to race with adults? A young kid really is like 17 or so in the Crate Late model game. He's 13 years old. And he's a driver. Like he is a real live race car driver. I'm Brock Pinkris. Uh, I race a 604 late model um, and I'm following the Rush Tour this year. Brock Pinkeris, Bam Bam, is uh, a very interesting character, I should say. Uh, my son, old soul, a lot more mature than most 13-year-olds. I think that if we didn't feel that he was mature enough, we wouldn't be putting him in this car. If you saw Brock outside of the race car, you would never believe that he drives the race car. He's just doing things a normal 13-year-old boy would do, uh, getting all dirty, spilling food everywhere. Our family's just really close. We do what most families do, um, except race. Uh, we race a lot. Um, not most families do that. And we have a lake house up in Lake George. We go there almost every weekend. We go out in the boat. And I have my buddy Kyle, he's like another brother. At the track, he's he's Bam Bam. He uh, He's focused right up, but as soon as we get to the house, he's Brock. We can joke around and be kids, whoever we want. When he's in the race car, it's almost as if he's aged like 10 years. His maturity level definitely comes out when he puts that helmet on. He's a different Brock and I've noticed that every time I've went to the racetrack. We're not from a family of racers. We had gotten him a little dirt bike when he was two, and uh, he was able to maneuver it pretty well, and so we, we thought maybe, you know, there was something there with, with that, so we went ahead and we bought him a, a little bit bigger one. He had a Pee Wee 50, we bought him a KTM 50, which I didn't realize that the thing was a 50 mile an hour dirt bike, and. Um, he was ripping it all over the place. I'm like, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down. I'm just not scared of uh, speed, and my dad found that out. Um, but he was a little nervous for me because I was so young. That's really kind of how he got his feet wet in the, in the racing because he was about four years old then. We went to a local dirt track, and uh, he saw the little slingshot cars, and, and I felt much safer with him being in you know, a roll cage versus being on a dirt bike anyway and he really showed interest in that, so I went to buy him one of them when he was five and uh, started racing when he was six. I started when I was six, and a year later, I won uh, at Accord Speedway. All right, so um, this white helmet up at the top, that was my first ever slingshot helmet. Um, then down here, uh, we got Glen Ridge slingshot, senior slingshot, Junior again, this one. It's my first ever sportsman win. This is a track championship I won. Over here is a picture of me winning my first ever sportsman win. Um, this is the helmet I won with. So I'm gonna have to give this thing away. just didn't happen overnight. Like he didn't just show up one day with a late model. Like we've been doing this for a minute. He's won a lot of races and a lot of different cars. I raced a slingshot, I raced a sportsman, I raced a uh, 358 modified, I raced a big block modified, and now I'm in the 604 late model. A lot of people don't understand what we're doing. Like they're always like, oh, daddy's money or whatever, mommy's money, you know, whatever you want to say. We don't come from a racing family. Like this is important because he doesn't have any other influence in his life to push him. Like he's learned this on his own. Um, it was almost like born into his soul to be a race car driver.
Brock is controversial and uh, it's because of his age. There's negative people out there. There's haters all the time that say, oh, he's a child. He shouldn't be out there. Come on, man. You just watch him race. You know, there's people that shouldn't be out there that are 30 years old. A lot of people say to me, is this like illegal what you're doing? And I, I said, no. Typically five years old is when a child can start to understand the level of responsibility that they have while they're driving a machine. Brock does a heck of a job. I mean, especially for how young he is, you know. Um, if you had to name a concern, you know, he just, he needs a little more patience sometimes. But again, he's 13 years old. That, you know, that'll come with seat time. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody can deny how much potential is there. The number one thing in racing is experience. And one of the best ways to, to get experience is start young. At the end of the day, regardless of his age, it's most important that the people who are in charge of his education uh, relative to racing have him on a right path and have him in, in going in a way where he'll be able to fulfill his goals safely but with a complete education. Everybody has haters, even if you don't race, even if you don't play sports. You know, there's definitely a lot of uh, controversy online. One of them was like, the two. this kid is too fat to get in the race car. And then the other one was uh, something like he's too young or something like that. It was just like stupid comments. So he's 13 years old, he pulls in on a tractor trailer and has full-time paid crude people, right? So like a lot of guys that are still working and they've got, they're doing everything that they can. If you wanna be jealous of a 13 year old kid that you never met, then you gotta look in the mirror a little bit. I mean, to me, I think it's a confident bootser. Uh, like, like they're just hating because they don't have what you have, or they're not doing what you're doing. I just take it, I put it in the garbage, and I just keep pushing. To work hard for something, to instill those values on the people around you, when people see that, you know, like Brock's dad, Paul, he started, you know, he started from nothing, he built his business. Brock looks at that, sees that, sees what his dad's done. You're gambling with your family's money, your kid's future, and it's that risk versus reward. I mean, you ain't gonna make it if you don't try, if you ain't all in. If you don't take that, that all important gamble, you're never gonna have the opportunity. Paul's wide open, man. He's all gas, no brakes. Uh, whatever he's doing, he's doing it uh, 100%. And uh, he's making decisions and figuring it out later. Overall, he's a guy that loves his son more than anyone, just like everybody. They, anybody would do anything for their son or daughter or whatever to succeed in this world, and that's what he's doing. He just does it a totally the loudest, most obnoxious way possible, you know? So that's it. And he's staring me down, or I'd say more. You know, there's three components that you have to have to have any success, time, money and help. Well, actually, I'm wrong. You need four things. You need talent, too. All the talent in the world with no money, you won't go anywhere. We're on a tour that's six and a half, seven hours away from my, my house. Like, it takes money to run this. Just because it's daddy's money, well, what the f is he gonna do? Go work at McDonald's? He's 13. There is guys that go to work every day to pay for their sh and they're 40 years old and they run okay and it's like wow this kid's 13 it must be nice i'm really appreciative of my dad you know he doesn't come home until you know eight o'clock at night you know he just puts all of his blood sweat and tears into his job just to have me racing out on the track um and have me traveling um some of them dads don't do that but my dad definitely does This year, uh, Rush uh, Late Mile, uh, we're uh, fourth in points. Um, and um, I can't believe I'm doing that. You know, he's trying to stay up there, uh, keep my nose clean. Um, and, you know, we checked off a lot of goals this year. We, you know, we finished second, we finished third, we almost passed for the lead. We had the lead and got passed. If we even get a second, we're like, listen, it's our first year on the Rush Tour. You know, I don't think anybody does that. Um, so, um, and especially at my age, uh, if I get this points locked down and I get the rookie of the year, you never know. I could be the youngest rookie of the year to ever 
be in late male history. Basically a NASCAR royalty um, made some statements to me that, I mean, really, really messed me up. Like I was second guessing everything about myself, you know, uh, as far as Brock racing. And when, when I seen him, I'm like, oh man, wow, like Brock, come here, we gotta meet this guy. But you know, he basically told me it's dads like me that that's the problem with racing, man. And I'm like, wait, what? Um, you don't know me. Racing is one of my favorite things to do. My parents have never pushed me to race. Only thing they ever pushed me to do was work out, watch my health, and go to school. So we had went down to the new state line speedway, which is in the border of Pennsylvania and New York. We really went there more for a test in June. Um, you know, to get ready for the for the Rush Series race the next night. But he wound up going out there and waxing the field, man. When Brock won at State Line, it was the most exhilarating feeling ever. I mean, I was elated. I was super proud, um, you know, jumping up and down with him. I, I held him and hugged him and just told him how proud I was. I was just, man, like I just won my first ever late mile race, like it was just surreal. We thought we were walking around with a, a modern day Elvis, you know, I mean, everybody was all over him, uh, hugging him, pitchers, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. It was really, you know, a sight to see and still kind of uh, unbelievable we were a part of something like that. And it's just, again, goes back to, you know, Bam Bam moves the needle. You'll see Bam Bam at the track, you know, during the race day, he's always getting prepped. He's always got his kind of itinerary of my race day checklist of things I've got to get done to be prepared for the night. Um, but still yet, he finds time for his fans. Um, Bam is the most humble and appreciative person. It's just pretty cool you guys like me like that and shake my hand. Like, I feel really proud of myself when you guys come up to me. You kids come up to me and ask me for pictures and I'll sign their hero card and anything. The main goal for him is, is to continue to stay out there. The driving part, He's going to continue to get seed time and grow and grow and grow. He's already won. He's already set quick times. He's already won heat races. But outside the car, he knows that if I'm going to keep doing this and make it to Cup, I have to find a way to attract the people, the right people, to fund it. I tell you what Brock has done really good, and Brock's team has done, is social media. His social media is just going wild right now. Um, it's kind of unbelievable, bigger than anything I've you know ever seen or been a part of. His numbers are you know making some NASCAR guys and some you know influencers look like they need to step their game up. When I was growing up, there was no chance of anybody other outside of my small little circle of watching me ever race a go-kart. Think about social media in the whole world of motorsports, you know, as a ma on a macro level. You know, you got people really bringing value to their sponsors on social media. You know, like it or hate it, social media is here and it's kicking ass for the sport of racing. August 8th, Woodhall. Whoa, Knowles and Pinker is almost making heavy contact out there. Coming off a of turn number two. As Jason tries to catch back up to Brock, Brock disappears from him out there. Then uh, this one caution of this Jason Knowles number four car. Uh, we went for green and went down and he doored me. We're getting into it again on the speedway. I think they're going to do something about that from the race director's viewpoint. I'm not quite sure. And now Knowles and Pinkeris getting into it again here in the front stretch. Knowles crosses the front end of Pinkeris down the back stretch as they're having a war out there on the speedway. And after that, he got by me uh, like after crossing my nose and hooking me. Um, and uh, so I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not ruining myself for a 15th place a car. And then, you know, you seen that video. Marletta, four-time winner this year, struggling bad tonight in car number 
We know fighting is wrong, and we're not going to make the same mistakes again. To all concerned, this letter is in regards to the incident that took place on August 8th, 2023 at Woodhall Raceway in Woodhall, New York, during the Rush Late Model Touring Series event. The driver is responsible for the conduct of his or her crews. Driver and team have been suspended from all Rush Racing Series sanctioned events for 30 days. What's up guys, wanna come on here and say a few things about last night. First off, I want to apologize on the behalf of my team's actions last night. We do not condone those actions, and it's completely unacceptable. I had a tough talk with my dad last night, and he's fully aware of the embarrassment he caused me, my team, and our spot. Violence and fighting is never the answer. Look, here it is. My actions are not okay. What I did wasn't okay. Um, I'm a father, first and foremost. I try to protect my kids, my wife, my family the best way that I can. I completely let my team and my family down by doing what I did. I didn't think I was wrong at the time. Now I know. To all of Brock's fans, to everybody who supports us, I'm truly sorry for my actions. It sucks to be out of the car for 30 days, four weeks, whatever it is. Um, but I've been working out, you know, getting ready to get back in this car for Pittsburgh and go there and prove a point. I think this story is about a kid starting from nothing and going to work his way up to the big time. We really just started in a little slingshot car and kept going from there. Long term, it's either going, you know, going on the uh, World Outlaws tour, uh, staying on dirt, and or even going to NASCAR. Um, those are my two goals. I don't know. I think this racing deal is really going to work out for me. Um, and if it does, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. You have a 12-year-old kid that's that's going up against uh, some of the biggest names in the sports in the sport and uh, having success at it. And there's plenty of kids who race, but to have success that he's having against the adults is, in my opinion, is unheard of. He is a real live race car driver, again, and he's just gonna get better. I think when Brock gets back on the track in Pittsburgh, everybody's gonna be in for a show, man. That kid is our future in racing. And without our kids in racing, like, what do we have? Honestly, what do we have? Just watch me, because one day I'm gonna be the greatest.